Hi, um, I'm, my name is Lori, and I am a recovering drug addict. Um, I grew up in Queen Anne's County. I moved here when I was in middle school. I went to Stevensville Middle School, and I graduated from Kent Island High School. Um, I had two loving parents. I had, I'm one of five children. Um, so why would you, how could a person like me become a drug addict? So as I sat up here I, and listened to everyone speak, I started to write down the initials of people's funerals that I have attended. There's five years between myself and my youngest brother, and this is just what I came up with over here. And these are the funerals I've attended. 21 people from the class Ken Island High School have died from drugs or alcohol. Those are all funerals related to that. So growing up in Cloverfields, I had um, a very supportive family. My father attended all of my sports. They took me to church. Um, but there was something missing. I had uh, very high anxiety. I was afraid, you know, I thought there was something different about me. Outward, people looking at me would think there's nothing wrong, but it was just something that I felt was off. So when I was in the eighth grade, I smoked marijuana for the first time. I felt great. The anxiety was gone, and I really liked it. Obviously, I was in the eighth grade, so I didn't do that every day. But, you know, as time went on, I started to drink. And I drank, I loved it, right? It was, I could be whoever I wanted, I was funny, I had a good time. But then I drank too much. My friends drank, but I blacked out. And then I would get so nervous and feel bad about it, but I thought, hey, I'm young, this is what young people do, right? But it's not what you have to do, and blacking out is never a part, supposed to be a part of anyone's story. So as time went on, you know, I was a pretty good student. I graduated high school. I had dreams of going to college. Um, I got pregnant with my beautiful red-headed boy when I was 18, uh, Dylan. So I stayed home and I went to community college and um, I was a good mother. I really was. I coached soccer. I was active in the community. I worked at a bunch of restaurants and I went on and I graduated from Chesapeake and from there I went to Towson. Um, and I graduated. Everything seemed like it was going okay. Um, I ended up going, getting into University of Maryland and I went to school to be a social worker. Um, however, another issue that I had was that I was often, um, I often dated guys that, you know, were not always the best. I, I went from toxic relationship to toxic relationship um, because I was trying to fill a hole inside of me. I, um, I allowed things that were, should not have been allowed in my life. Um, so when I was in my first semester of graduate school, my older brother was killed and I had to pull him off life support. So I felt really alone, like I felt really lonely and um, I was in a relationship and it ended and so I started doing what I always did when things didn't go my way and I didn't want to feel something, I started drinking more. And then after that, I started doing a lot of cocaine. At one point, a friend of mine said, Lori, you know, you're not going to find your brother at the bottom of that bag. And, um, you know, things had gone on. And then eventually, um, I stopped doing that for a while. I had a small baby, um, and I was trying to care for him. Anyway, sorry, I'm super nervous. But, um, so I continued on and I met a guy and his name was Jeff and he was so handsome and he, um, he paid attention to me and I loved him very much. I said, and because I'm codependent, I do whatever he said. I needed this guy to like me. And uh, so if he told me the sky was green, it was green, it was green. So I did it, whatever. Um, but he had um, some issues as well. And when I want something and I need to fill that void inside of me and my identity was hooked on what he thought about me, like that's what it was. It was that I had to fill this God-sized hole with something and it was Jeff. So um, he did well for a while, he got clean. Um, I continued in school, you know, um, 
I went back, my youngest son went back and forth. Um, and then my oldest son would stay with us. But then, um, you know, we thought everything was getting better. And then my last semester of graduate school, um, I came home from a double shift. I worked at a local restaurant and I came home and I found uh, Jeff dead on the floor of a heroin overdose. And um, I had to tell his mother that he had died. It was, it was horrible. So I went home. I, I lived with my mom and dad and um, I tried to cope, but at this point I got worse. Um, instead of drinking, because I'd already gotten a DUI, that's really what slowed me down, is I got a DUI in Queen Anne's County, so I didn't drink anymore. But I needed something to fill that void. So I started to take Xanax, and I was sniffing them. I was breaking them down and crushing them up. And my father used to beg me to come inside. He was so worried about me. But I wouldn't. I just wouldn't go in. And um, anyway, so... Four months later to the day, my father had a massive heart attack and he died. And um, I lost my mind. You know, I, I thought that the thing that brought me there um, to recovery was those three things, but it, it really, that's what brought me back to God. I, I struggled for so, so long after my dad died. I, um, I ended up losing my job and then my drug addiction escalate it. I remember meeting someone across the bridge. I said, I need a Xanax. I'm going to have a seizure because that's what happens if you use, um, if you use benzos or alcohol, those are things that you can die from. So I said, I, I need this. I have to have it. And they said, I got something else. And I'll never forget that moment when they pulled that needle out of my arm for the first time. And she said, Lori, this may re ruin your life. And every jail cell that I laid in um, every cold floor detox, and I, I used to remember that, that feeling, but um, the same thing that I had found that killed Jeff, that had ruined so many things I was doing, right? And it was horrible. And I, I fought that addiction um, for like five, four or five years. It was really horrible. Um, I went to jail. I've been to jail in three different counties. Um, and it wasn't until they said they're going to take my youngest son from me. And, um, you know, I, at that point, I was trying to get my life together. I'd gone to the Witsit Center. I kept trying and trying to get clean, but I just couldn't. I just couldn't do it. Um, so finally, um, I get, I had gone, when they said they were going to take my son, I went to court. And I, I relapsed. I relapsed over feeling. That's what I did. Um, I used drugs. I said, if they're going to take my son, then I'm just going to get high. He's better off without me. So let me tell you, in five months, I was arrested five different times. I had gotten a car, a nice car, and I totaled that. I hit somebody. I could have killed them, but I, luckily I didn't. Three days later, I took my mother's car and on high on fentanyl, and I totaled that. I hit a crane coming from Baltimore City. And then it really got bad. I, um, I was attacked in the city, and I still went back. I wasn't going to stop. I was arrested three more times in a week, right? And it wasn't until the, on the, the day before my last arrest, I said, I got on my knees, and I was like, God, please just kill me or take this from me because I can't stop. I cannot stop using drugs. There was nothing that I could do that would stop me. I mean, literally, it, it was, and my, young, my oldest son had a mother. He had a real mother that used to coach his sports, and then all of a sudden he's in the eighth grade, right? His mom's gone. She's just gone. I, I, he couldn't stop me. He actually reached out to Evolve Life Centers. It's a place in Pasadena. He said, look, he said, can you help me? My mom is going to die. And he said, please, she's been there. And he and they, the judge released me. My mother got an attorney. They released me, and I had to go to treatment. So I, and at this point, I was facing prison time, right? Not jail time this time. It was prison time. So I took, um, it's called a DUI drug court, and I took that in uh, Anne Arundel County. And um, 
It was the best thing I ever did. I finally, in and out of rehab all this time, I had just smoked up a six plus master's degree level. I, did, I ruined my record. I would spent all my money. So this time I worked. I didn't do it for anybody else. I worked. And in 18 months, I completed that program with not one dirty urine. I'd never had any sanctions. I had literally lost everything that I had. I went to court and I told the judge after I'd gone there high, I went back in and I was clean at this point and I said, don't give me my son back. I said, don't, you know, I can't take him. I was in a rehab or I was in a recovery house and I had just gotten out of one of my weekends, right? I was doing a weekend in jail. And my sister calls me and she says, uh, a friend of mine had died and she died next to her baby. So when I went to court, I said, don't give me my son back. I need, and they, they agreed. They said, Miss LaGrosa needs this amount of time. And I said, yeah, I do. I, I need this amount of time because he doesn't deserve it. And at this point I stopped playing the victim and I became accountable for the things that I've done. Like it, I did them. I could have stopped, but I ignored it, you know, until it was too late, until the addiction had taken over my life. So when they told me to get a home group, to get a sponsor, to do all those things, I did them. I go to meetings, I go to CR, I go to NA, I work with other women, and I remember. And every time I look at my son, who I've had back with me, in October, it'll be two years I got him back. Um, thank you. I look at him and I think, I will never, you know, and you can never say never. So I just keep working and working and working. When people say to me, why do you take him to meetings? I say, because I would have taken him to buy dope. And that's, that's the truth. I would have taken my son to buy dope. I didn't care. Because that was my God. That was who ruled my life, was my drugs. And you couldn't take them from me. That was filling the void and the hole that was inside of me that I needed fixed. So today... Fast forward, I got my life back. I have my own place. I, I bought a car, and because my insurance rates obviously are so high, um, <laughs> I paid cash for a car off the lot. Like I literally, I went back to school. I took a class I needed. I have a job, I've been in it for two years, and I like it. I, I had a job that closed during the pandemic and they asked me to come back. Like, recovery is possible if you are willing to put in the work. Whatever that demon is, that anxiety, whatever it is, that hole that you're trying to fill, it can only be filled with a higher power. And for me, I call that Jesus Christ, and I know it. I know it. Um, but that's for me. And you don't, but if you need to reach out and you're not there at that spiritual level, I have plenty of friends. Just come. Just come. I have... Um, one of my friends, I was afraid to do this, and I said to her, I said, man, I, I don't know if I can do this. It's not a regular meeting. It's regular people are going to be there. I'm scared. And she said, Lori, she said, man, when I was in prison, you wrote me letters. She said, I, you took, and I knew who to call when I needed to go to treatment because I watch your walk. And that's the truth, you know. Um, it's not about attraction it, or not about a promotion. It's, it's watching me walk. Like, this is, this is what I do every single day. I do the very best I can to stay clean and to, that's it. I just try, I just try to stay clean and focus and keep my family together and help the next person. Um, the Tims have been amazing. They prayed for me. They, and I don't, I don't even think I deserve it. You know, it was, it was really, it's amazing what the NA program has done for me, what CR has done for me in my life. And anybody, if this addict, who literally lost everything, can get their life back. Anybody can. It's possible. Thanks for letting me share. Thank you.